of First uh, Peter, uh, uh, Peter one and two talks about how the influences First Peter's from uh, influence uh, on the inside, and uh, Second Peter's from influences on the outside. And we get into the book of Peter in this particular chapter and verse or this passage of scripture, Peter starts to uh, exhort the people of God uh, in this particular chapter. He starts with uh, the leaders first. He said the elders, verse number one said, the elders which are among you, I exhort you. Mm -hmm. Exhort me to strongly uh, encourage or strongly admonish uh, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Uh, feed the flock of sorry, God. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not be not by constraint, but willingly. Right. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Right. Say a ready mind. Right. Neither as being Lord over God's heritage, but being samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Likewise, you start to dress the younger. Likewise, the younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Uh, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resented the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Right. Humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, sell you. Yes, sir. And I want to talk about this just for a little bit and encourage the hearts and the minds of the people of God today. He said, after ye suffered a while, uh -huh. after alluding to this psalm on last week, we don't want to suffer. Right. We don't want to go through anything. We want to be comfortable. Right. But suffering is necessary right. if you are to become the sons and daughters, or we are to become the sons and daughters that God is calling for. He said four things is going to happen after you suffer a while. After you suffer a while. Yes, sir. Make you perfect, uh -huh. establish, strengthen, mm -hmm. and sell you. Yeah. We know in Hebrew terms, for me to reveal. Uh -huh. After you've gone through the things in your life, the rough times, the up times, the down times, then God will reveal yes. the strength and what the reason why He carried you through in the first place. Right. But we have to, yes, God, we have to be able to endure yes. suffering. Yes, it's not that God's coming to kill you, destroy you.
without using all the necessary materials they take. Oh God, the Bible says if a man's going to build a house, let him first count up the cost. Not, yes God, the pastor said it, not for the, the beginning of the progress, but the end of it. When a builder builds a house, he sees the end before he starts. He likewise knows everything is going to go in place, then he has to start the process of the building. So what comes with building, the rebar, and I worked with Ella Thomas, most of y'all know him, in construction. I remember being in, in um, Ashton City, and we was out there building a 30-foot manhole, steel and concrete. 30 foot, they put me in that small sky. They put me in this hole because it was easy to winch me down and breaking off the wall ties and all the things that go into this. And then after the form was built, they bring in three or four trucks of cement. The cement has to be just right. It has to be uh, liquefied to the point to where it's not too soft and not too hard when they pour it. So when they pour it in there, it takes the form of the form that's already laid. So once it's poured, it fills up. It, we, we have to take this, this trap, smooth it over. Then they had me take this large vibrating machine and I stick it down into the, the cement to shake everything together. This thing, is, it shakes so, so vigorously that it, it had my hands itching. Uh -huh. I had to stop every now and then and scratch my hand, even with insulated gloves. And I'm shaking this thing together. This process actually takes the air bubbles out of the cement. Uh -huh. So when it sets, and when it sets, when it's, when it's secure, the air bubbles won't cause it to, to be defective. to set, to solidify. The process takes, matter of fact, the process in getting the concrete down takes less time than for the curing of the process, or the curing of the concrete. It has to set for a certain amount of time. And then I thought about this, the Lord began to show me this. He said, I can't afford to put everything I have planned in your life on top of you if you're not solidified. I know you feel
for you. It's at a certain time that he's going to give it. Now I'm studying about the curing up of this country it takes 28 days. And in one part of the movie, they said, Santa, you can't have a wife. You can't be Santa unless you got a wife. I said, what? Even Santa Claus got a wife. He can't do it, do it. God will be 
left out of my life. Because I know I can have all the money, but people are killing themselves with billions sitting in the bank. <coughs> For money, I ain't going to help you. But to solidify, he said these four things are happening to sell you, establish you. It's to get you to a point of where you, you're not moved anymore. He said, so you won't be carried away with every wind of doctrine. Paul said, I will let none of these things move me. All of these things that come up against us, God is really trying to get us to the point, y'all, to where we're not just speaking this stuff standing in this sanctuary. That's right. Then when we leave here Monday, Tuesday through Sunday, we I just irate out of that just our mind about it. We don't know what, what we're going to get a next meal from one day to the next. How are we going to make ends meet? The Lord said, when your faith is solidified, yeah. when your praise is solidified, you will really live that life to where I bless the Lord at all times. Yes. All right. Paul said, and in perils and in all these things he went through, he still didn't give up. All right. I would have gave up after being shipwrecked three times, probably. All right. But because God has a purpose for my life, yes. he won't let me give up. Amen. So we have to be solidified. Thank you, Deacon Joe. I don't want to put him on the spot, but we were talking. And he said the word solidification, it means the process in which something is solidified. <laughs> Everything has a process. That's a process. Solidification is a process to be solidified. If the country, if the 
cement, yes, God is cement before it's concrete. If the cement has anything added to it, an extra amount of water, and I remember us, when we poured the, the, the slab for the manhole out in Ashton City, it started to rain. And me and my wife were talking about it, it started to rain. And when it does that, you can't keep working. Because then you you take a chance of a, a risk of, of messing up the integrity of the country. Because the, right. 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 the water's going to add more to it. That's right. right. So they cover it. Why you haven't give up? 
You thought you sat here this morning for nothing. <laughs> Think you got here this morning on your own? Now you ain't. Now you ain't. <laughs> it's because God is in you. Working that thing out of you and working them air bubbles out of you and working in you what needs to be in you so when he builds on you, you won't buckle in the rest. I don't want you that way. Come on, truth. I ain't talking to you listen. <laughs> but he don't want us that way. He wants us constant. Unmovable, yes, God. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You know what it means to abound? That no matter what comes, I'm going to still do the work. Come on, man. When they throw me overboard for my life, when they give me a piece of on my job, I'm going to do the work. I'm solidified. I'm going to bring this to a close. This scripture came to me while I was meditating earlier this morning. Paul said uh, in Romans 8, 37 through 39, he said, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Y'all know what's going on. I want to read it in this entirety. For I am persuaded, I'm solidified. I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul's heart was solidified. All right. And you read about his life and all the things he went through. Set him up like country. He wasn't moved That's good. by what the enemy do or try to do. Note that in the scriptures, the, the demon said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. Yeah. But who are you? You're a bad man with them. When the devil's can say, I know who that is right there. This is the way God wants us to be. To where the devils know. That's my son right there. You can't touch him. That's my daughter. You can't touch her. The enemy knows when you solidify. Oh, Lord, he knows. He said, if you consider my servant Job, he tells the devil how he's an upright man, one of the sure of evil. Devil didn't even want to be bothered with Job. Y'all really know the, the truth of it. He really wants to study Job. He know he could get Job. But because he had a thought in his mind, if he do this, then he'll do this. The devil don't know you like you think he do. He don't. He try to pick God's mind and say if he do this, he's going he gonna to curse you to your faith. But God already set purpose in Job's life. He's already solidified. Job's life. And what he's done in our lives, fill us with it. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, Come on now. get it. Amen. Because that's a country. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. If you felt like God has left you, the devil is a lie. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Get solidified, saints. Get solidified, Mark. Get solidified. Get solidified so we can stand the wind and the rain. The things that will come up against us outside forces, the inside forces that will come up against us and will never be moved. God bless you. God smile you. Smile upon you. God give you his peace in Jesus' name. Amen.